Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the Flux Project Dev Meeting. Uh, it's uh, June 2nd, 2022. And I am saying this really just for anyone who's listening to the video later. Uh, hey everybody, here's the link to the, to the um, pardon me, sorry. Getting a lot of notifications, let me turn this off. Okay, great. Um, there's a link to the agenda. Um, yeah. Um, also, I we we so right now we have these basic to the topics that are here for every week. Um, I also wondered uh, before we get into those real quick because because Chris Short you're here. Yeah. Uh, there's there is something that we were talking about, um, and I wonder if it's best to, in terms of presentation, I wonder if that's if it's good to talk about here, or if that's best to just slack about and take offline. Yeah. Uh, uh, we can well, let's not talk about it if it's recorded. How about that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure we don't overstep. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Anyway, there's a presentation. There are some presentation ideas. That's all. Um, yes. But then I won't put that on the agenda. But does anyone have anything else to add to the agenda before we get into the current dev focus? Well, if you do, uh, just pop it pop it on the list. And if you're having trouble editing it, um, just shoot us a comment here, and we can help you out. Okay. So who? Um, Who's able to give an overview of the current dev focus? Do you want me to um, share my screen? Or does someone want to do that? I can say a few words. So we are okay. on the last mile of reducing flag 0310, which comes with, let's say, three major things. One is Helm OCI support. Um, so Flux source control will be able to pull charts for from container registries. Um, that's one. Uh, the second one is in, um, being able to trigger uh, GitHub actions through the GitHub dispatch API. This is uh, someone that, so an, an external contributor, uh, uh, got that into Flux notification controller. The idea is that you may want to have some, uh, trigger some external services when uh, Flux does, um, you know, a reconciliation or some health check fails, or you want to react to Flux events uh, from outside the cluster. And this is now possible by um, creating a GitHub dispatch provider um, with notification controller, and then you'll forward all. Uh, so, Flux notification controller will forward all these events to GitHub. Then, inside the, the GitHub workflow, you can take decisions based on uh, the Flux event. Like, you know which Helm release was upgraded, if it failed or not, in which namespace, in which cluster, and so on. So, based on that, I don't know, you can trigger. Load tests, end to end tests, you can do things in Git and so on. So the possibilities here are uh, unlimited uh, around you know, other integrations that you want to build uh, for Flux. Uh, and third thing, which is um, we've been struggling a lot with um, Git version two protocol, which Azure DevOps uses and other implementations. And hopefully we have sorted out all these uh, issues around timeouts, deadlocks, open SSL and lib SSH2 uh, edge cases. So what we did, we, um, we replaced um, the transport in libgit2 from um, using the, the C libraries like OpenSSL and SSH2, we now have 
uh, replace that with the Go native transport. And from our tests, this solves all these edge cases around um, reaching out to Git, uh, cloning, pushing, uh, creating new branch branches, and so on. And yeah, hopefully that's uh, the end of uh, uh, of the Git issues for us. That was it for um, for what's coming next. Uh, in regards to GA, we have. Uh, check. Oh, sorry, Stefan, real quick before you get to that. Do you mind? Um, um, I was just looking at the looking at the board for the um, the dev update. Um, I see a lot of what you said in the done category. That's great. Uh, is there? Um, is there more that should be on here? Aside from this, this website issue, um, well, like are, are we? I, I thought there was still an open some some open uh, work for the Helm of CI stuff. Is there? I guess I'm just wondering: is it all represented here? Uh, what filter are you using? I just went to current release. Um, yeah. So for thirty one. Um, which is the next release? Yeah, uh, we yeah we we are done. There is okay. a a fix in source controller that is not currently no in image automation controller that's missing from that. Uh, okay, we can add. Yeah, so add add this one. Yeah, that that's fine. Yeah, so when those two are are done, we are going to do the release. Oh come on! All right, I'll just go directly to it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yes, and so for GA, we advanced a little bit. We now have, um, we have finished the task around uh, Flux cloud documentation. We have finally, we finally have documentation for all the three main clouds, Azure, um, AWS and, and Google Cloud. Santochi added the, the Google Cloud docs. Thank you very much, Santochi. Um, it's more about you know um, having uh, specific guides for people that want to use um, the cloud um, Git offerings, and this is what we captured today. So we have uh, Azure with Azure. Well, we have. AKS with Azure DevOps and <coughs> AWS with code commit. And finally, we now have uh, Google Cloud with cloud source repositories. Um, still way more things to do. We still have to do on the documentation side, um, write docs for uh, the dev guides for, for writing new controllers. And also we need to finish refactoring of the APIs for case status compatibility, which we still have some controllers left to do. But small steps, we are getting closer. That's it for me. Thank you, Stefan. Um, okay, wow. So then the other topic um, is just our, our docs update topic. And you touched on one of those, um, one of those points. Um, Daniel often is the person that's been giving the docs update, uh, at least on the regular. 
Um, does anyone have anything else to, to say about, um, about our docs? We have talked to users and there are, as I see, there are two groups. One group of users who are uh, not happy at all with the docs because let's put it in their words, uh, Flux docs are only for smart people. So that's one category. The other category is like, I talked to a bunch of people at QCon and people were like, really happy with our docs and they felt like, okay, if I want to find something about the specific API, I have a single page, it's huge. If I read everything, I truly understand what can I do with, the, uh, with that specific API. So for the first category, we have to spend more time on explaining the basics. Um, I mean, we, I think I wrote the docs that I wrote, which are part of Flux, I wrote it for people that I thought they have advanced Kubernetes knowledge and they know what they are doing and they are on their, let's say, day two of their journey towards uh, uh, Kubernetes in production. But definitely that's not the case. There are people starting with Kubernetes by looking at the Flux docs. So, um, we also uh, assume that you know having all these dedicated controllers for Helm, customize and, and Git and so on. We um, we wrote the docs from a Helm user perspective. But if you don't, you're not a Helm user. You just heard about Helm, then you ended up on the Flux website. We don't explain what Helm is. We you just dive down into. It's a deep dive into how you orchestrate uh, Helm in a declarative model and so on. But um, I can see how these users will easily get lost in our docs. So yeah, I'm not sure how this- I agree. The question is if we can help these people, right? So I, I guess we don't want to explain Helm on the Flux website. So maybe we could provide more links to other intros or guides, but I wouldn't want to maintain the documentation ourselves or, yeah, or other software and stuff or Kubernetes yeah. in general. Exactly. And, you know, one of the other things that we, we, um, we plan to do, uh, and I think we'll probably get started on this pretty soon after the KubeCon CFPs are due, <laughs> Uh, that crazy deadline that's happening um, tomorrow night. Um, the idea was to do very short um, presentations on how to's from just a very beginning uh, level, um, not getting into, like you said, Max, you know, and, and as you agreed, Stefan, not, not trying to reproduce all the documentation from the other projects, but for integrations, um, to, to, to at least at least have like just an extremely basic starting point with with links elsewhere like hey listen if you you know this for example there's an explanation of what helm is how to think about it how we think about this in integrating with flux you know and then really um for example uh when i give talks on this i usually describe terminology you know things that people might not know what a what a what a, what a release is, what versions are, what charts are, et cetera. Um, and just try to explain it really simply. Um, or anyway, the idea is to do like very short uh, videos of that, that can also be written as well. You know, like maybe five minutes ones, you know, and then that they could be, um, you know, I know Stefan, you had mentioned before that, uh, you know, <laughs> docs are kind of interesting in that um, in a way it's almost like, spoon feeding uh, bits of entertainment to folks who maybe would be better to just say, here's a manual, read it. And, but since you're talking about this one user group, I think that might make sense, you know, at least there to have some short little intro options too, you know, just for different styles of learners. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. And I don't want to have a short introduction. We have like tons of docs, right? 
Yeah. And if we if every doc page starts with O, in here we are going to mention 20 concepts. Here are all of them, right? Yeah. So you'll have like this huge wall of text at the beginning of every single doc page. So no, we have to have find a way to consolidate them maybe under I don't know core concepts or stuff like that where we explain oh what is customized what is Helm what what is server side apply what what are all these all these things that to us um, feel like a given but yeah as I said the first category of users they are completely lost uh, into our terminology. Um, anyway, there is also a proposal on restructuring the docs and having them more, uh, but yeah, I'll let Daniel next meeting, he, he can talk more about it. There is a good proposal on how to restructure the, the docs, uh, move sections around, but this will, this will improve, uh, let's say, the way you can navigate them, but if the content is the same, we are not making any progress for, for the people that are getting started with Flux and also with Kubernetes, also with Helm and customize all things from zero. Yeah, so we need both, that makes sense. Well, um, are there other topics that anyone wanted to bring up or questions that folks had. Um, I'm not, I'm definitely not trying to fill up the time. We, we could certainly end early, but if there is, um, but if there is anything that we need to discuss, we could do that now. We're just, we've, uh, we've cleared our topic list so far. Are we still cutting all these today or this week? Yes, hopefully today. Nice. But if, yeah, depends how, how many other things will break down the, down the line. Um, Just sort of look at the failures. Yeah. Anyway, next time, don't merge the update PR. Because now if something breaks, we have to roll back everything we did in May. Well, we only have- Wait, you had to roll it back? Yeah, I mean, May now has some parts of the controllers. Oh, and those aren't compatible with the part? How do you know if we haven't released them all? And you already merged, merged I see. It. So we always bump everything or nothing. No, depends on what changed. Now we changed all of the controllers, right? We upgraded Kubernetes packages to 124. That would break things, of course. We also upgraded a bunch of packages because we have the Go YAML had CVs around Panics, Customize, Helm. Right, so we've, we've basically upgraded half of our dependencies across the board. And we, unless we yep. see the final end-to-end -end test of all the controllers, all the APIs, everything together, we cannot say for sure that they will. Yeah, work. I was about to ask that. So you cannot see these test results on the individual PRs, is that true? Of course. What do you mean? Okay, then I'm... I'm confused. Like if if the PR is green, there may still be problems arising from merging it. On on the flux two uh, repo. So on the flux two repo, there is a bot that scans all right. the controllers for releases. When it right. finds a new release, it it opens a pull request and it updates the CRDs, the container image, everything in Flux2. And for that, then we run end-to-end -end tests on uh, Intel, ARM64, uh, Azure, whatever, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what, what, what we want to do is wait for 
all the things that we want to include in a particular release, all the controllers to be released. So there is a single pull request that contains all of them. And if those tests are green, then, then we merge it because we know that you know, the next version of Flux contains all these controller updates and all of them work together. Now you merged four of them. Let's say image automation controller, we release it now and it, it doesn't work because there is a bug in source controller because it imports some packages from there, right? So we need to do an, a patch in source controller, release source controller again and so on, right? While we already merged it into main. <laughs> So if someone just imports Flux from main, now they have like, you know, half of the controllers are updated, half not. So Flux 2 is an opinated distribution of our controllers, right? So in order for us to make sure that the next version of our distribution works, we need to test them all together. And how we do it, we we let that pull request, um, you know, uh, gather all the uh, new versions and test them together. Because if we find out at the end, let's say image automation controller has an issue. And if someone has already used the manifest in the Flux2 repo, what are we going to do? We have to roll it back, right? And that could not work for many. People. So that's why we, we usually don't, don't merge uh, that one until we have, have them all together. That's Got the it. register. Okay, so he does say uh, we are going to do the image automation release and hopefully and then test will pass and we'll be releasing Flux 2 in an hour or two from now. Yeah, I'm just preparing the change log for that. Great. Do we, oh, sorry. Do we have, um, I was just thinking all of what you said was really We don't really have all of that, what you had just said, Stefan, documented anywhere, do we? We do. Do we uh, fully documented? I'm looking for it now. I don't know why. I'm looking at our processes. Yeah. Basically, I was just wondering, was there anything out of what you had just mentioned? Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I guess just Max, just as a suggestion, if you don't mind looking over this and seeing if there is any part of what Stefan, any details that Stefan just mentioned that are missing from here that might be good to add, um, that would be a really great PR. I'm not sure. trying to sign you anything. I'm just, if you, if you have time since you asked and it seems like you're already in the process mode, it might be nice. Yeah, we can can definitely improve this doc and explain how the bot works. Because it just said automate it with GitHub action, but if you don't actually read what the GitHub action does, you have no clue. And right. it does maybe, a bunch of things. Yeah, and maybe just even interpret it, you know, um, it might be nice to have a summary, yeah, of the, of the intention. That way, even if someone does want to make a PR to contribute to the bot, they'll have guidelines for that too. Okay, cool. Yeah, so after this release, next main thing is we need to switch Flux, all the Flux packages, all the Flux controllers to go 118. So as you all know, go 118 comes with generics and some libraries that we depend on decided that hey we are going to rewrite everything with generics and this is what asia did that means you can no longer upgrade any kind of asia sdk unless your whole project is on go 118 so basically forces everyone out there that deals anything with asia to switch to go 118 
Uh, we also need to get that into Mozilla SOPS because, yeah, SOPS integrates with Azure KMS and so on. So we are kind of stuck right now at we can no longer upgrade anything Azure because they uh, they set the Go 118 in their Go mode uh, files. So that's, that's our next priority in terms of... Um, the whole project we need to make sure everything builds fine all our c bindings are working libgit2 everything then um, switch our controllers to 118 so we can import azure I just made a note of that under action items for now. I don't, we can- There is an issue. Move to go 118, hit the code. Okay. Hit the maybe. Okay, cool. What I did for this release is making sure Flux 2, the CLI and all the packages there work with go 118. And when we'll publish the next CLI, it will be built with 118. So the binary will be built with 118, but uh, go mode everywhere is still on 117. Got it. Um, I have a quick question. This may be very obvious, um, but I was just looking for like, visibility and stuff. I know we, we have our project boards. Um, have, do we want to use milestones for our releases? No, there is a GA milestone everywhere in all projects. Right, right. Where we add um, features that are part of the roadmap when they are implemented that those particular pull requests are added to the GA roadmap. But tracking GA is only through, of course, what we listed on the roadmap, then uh, a more deep dive is using the project. We don't want to have yet another project or whatever thingy on every single. Oh, totally. I, I just meant, um, I just meant for, um, you know, to attach um, projected dates onto upcoming releases, that's all. Projective dates, there is no such thing in Flux. <laughs> right. Do you have it in Helm? Uh, yeah, but that but the, it, Helm is already a graduated project for quite a while. And so this was something that happened after graduation. I, I'm not suggesting we need to do it now. Okay. No, it was just a, uh, yeah. <laughs> not We don't need What's to do What's the it deadline now. on Helm before? Tomorrow? Um, I think it worked fairly similarly. Helm did fairly similar, you know, like it was when it was ready, it was when each release was ready, each release was ready. Um, and and after, gradu after graduation, sometime after graduation, CNCF recommended um, moving to a cadence for greater stability so that there would be, you know, um, minor releases with every, what is it, three, every four months or something like that. And then, and then uh, patches could be uh, in between um, was the idea. So yeah, that... we'll have to, to adopt a similar strategy for Flux after, um, after GA. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll bring it back up. Um, I don't wanna derail now, but yeah, that, I'm glad you mentioned that. Okay, yeah, so the milestone. right now we, we have no fixed date for any a release usually okay. minor releases come with uh, features because we are not at 2.0 yet right. um, and the cadence is the cadence we usually release patches very fast as if bugs are reported and minor releases uh, at least once per month so yeah thanks Let's see, does anyone have any other 
topics they wanted to mention. Um, if not, we can uh, get in early. Sure. Get some work done. <laughs> get some other work done. Um, get the right. release up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get the release up. <laughs> I'm very, very excited, by the way, about the, the Helm support. This is, um, this is going to be huge um, for, folk, for folks you know, who, who are Helm users who, who, uh, who also want to use Flux. Scott, do you know if Helm OCI has been adopted by, uh, uh, at scale? I, I'm looking at Bitnami. They use the HTTP thing. Yeah. Today they deleted like thousands of charts from there because the index file is too large. <laughs> uh, OCI Oops. solves that issue. Yes, it does. Uh, that's a that is one of the big things too, right? Um, I don't, I don't uh, know of of anyone already using it. Um, as well, okay. I don't. I I know. I know some companies are using. Uh, have been using um, artifacts at scale, but but for Helm artifacts, I, I think they probably wouldn't want to advertise that because they've until very recently had only been doing that on experimental code. <laughs> so, um, so I think we have yet to see that, but there've been tests. Uh, I'll, we'll have to get some of that info together. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, we have to, I don't know, do some blog posts, workshops, talks, encourage Flux users to get rid of HTTP repos. Uh, because from a Flux perspective, the performance and uh, network usage, everything around that is so, so much better with OCI. Basically, you don't download some huge YAML every, I don't know, every time there is a new chat uh, release. And I know for Bitnami, I, they were saying like they have terabytes of traffic per, uh, per month. And I, I can believe it. Like, if you have to download, I don't know, 24 megabyte or whatever the index YAML is, every time you want to check if there is a new chart version available. And yeah, it can get really, really ugly. It's true. Yeah. So yeah hopefully these large uh, organizations that have these public repos will offer at some point um, OCI. Um, I, we know I know the flux charts are now published on GCR. Um, the flux charts which are maintained by the community. Mm -hmm. But besides that, I see no change. I mean, cert manager is not on OCI, Kiverno is not, uh, Istio is not, like nothing out there uses OCI, none of the popular. Um, the most popular tools, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, I don't and, know. Maybe yeah. you could reach to the NGINX Ingress team from from Kubernetes, right? They should do it. I, I'm guessing that's the most downloaded chart ever, or the Prometheus operator chart, right? From the Prometheus community. Yeah, I helped them a bit with that, and I also co-maintain the or co-admin anyway the, the Prometheus chart stuff. I've yeah. been thinking about that a lot too. You know, that's one of the things. I mean, I guess we can, we can do this as a follow up, but I, I think that the Helm tooling, um, where we built automation for people to automate their repos using GitHub Actions and so on, we don't have such a thing yet for um, for automating into you know GitHub's artifacts. You don't um, need to. I mean, you no. just use the Docker login action, then. Instead of Helm push to the HTTP repo, you say Helm push OCI. This is the OCI and it works. Like for for my for for Flux, we, we change like two lines in the GitHub action to publish on both, right? Because I'm guessing that's the first thing. You'll you'll publish on both. And hopefully Helm v4 will deprecate the HTTP repo and everybody will finally move on, but that's years ahead. Right. So yeah, I think now we have to encourage all these popular, uh, all these organizations that maintain these popular Helm repos to offer an OCI alternative. And I don't know, 
um, GitHub Container Registry is free. There is also AWS ECR public, but that's, that will definitely not work with Flux because they block. Um, you cannot get the list of tags from an image. They block that uh, endpoint. So I don't know why they did that, but anyway. Uh, it's unusable from my perspective. If we knew someone from AWS, we could, we could. Uh... <laughs> oh, there is an issue open like months ago. I, um... I mean, do you need something? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Only someone could help prioritize. Oh, yeah. Actually, that is a good note, though, because this is related. Um, it's, you know, like, obviously a super popular cloud uh, provider. That relates to what we're doing. If if we can find the issue, maybe we can pass it along. Yeah, that'd be great. Like, let me know. Okay, I'll just make that as an action item. Thank you. Do you mind if I? Yeah, you can ping me whenever. Ask, I'm yeah, and ask you, Stefan, to find the issue as an action item. Oh yeah, that's from last year. Oh God. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> I wasn't here last year, hopefully, at this point. Nope, I wasn't. Good. Okay. Get off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I mean, what is the... We need to have something done here. Like, so, is it all in ECR? Or is it so something else? You, you publish something on, on the ECR public, right? Let's say you publish a chart mm -hmm. for your app. Now... In order for Flux or Helm to detect the latest version, you can pass it a sample expression. You can mm -hmm. say to Flux, hey, get me the latest patch release of 1.0. And Flux or and also the Helm CLI does the same thing. What they what they do is they go, they fetch. There is a special API call in the OCI spec. Oh, I think says uh, just list tags. Wrapped. I think Chris just accidentally dropped. Well, we're being recorded anyway, so he can oh, just record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember this issue. Oh, here he is. Yeah. Yeah. Zoom just completely crashed. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, so the idea is in order to determine which is the latest patch release of a particular version, you have to do list tags. You have to call that. OCI API, it's in the spec. Everybody implements it. Well, not ECR mm. public. Okay. Only ECR for money. So I'm guessing you have to pay to do to list the tags feels very awkward. Anyway. Uh, yeah, um, that seems kind of weird. Let me bounce that off a couple of people and see what I can do. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah, because if it were behind a paywall, that particular feature, then that would that would mean that suck. Yeah, it would mean no, <laughs> it would mean no Helm users could use not just yeah. for fun, but nobody could use um yeah uh, because Helm does the same stuff, right? When you do a Helm install and GenX or whatever, first it does tags list and ECR public says reject. So you have to go to some other registry to use that. Cool. Yeah, so I for will... private repos, it definitely makes sense that you would want to be able to use an IAM role to right. permit people or not permit them to list tags, but that doesn't fit in the OCI spec, so. All right, let me push the right people in the right places. I have an old friend from Red Hat uh, on the ECR team, so. Small world. I love this. So also what's what's really, really annoying about this issue is that nowhere that's documented. Like you cannot find nowhere oh. on AWS documentation. We don't allow list. So you have to actually run it, run into issues like setting up mm. flux automation or running a helm to detect, oh, it's not working. Why is it not working? So you have to build out the whole thing before you realize it's not working. Right, that, so you lose like half a day. Right, why yeah, it's that's not no working. bueno. Yeah, no. And we, the only we... information is only on GitHub. Only on GitHub. You can actually see that, no, someone from AWS said, no, this is not 
actually support it. So wow, it's, okay, uh, strange. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Anyway, we recommend. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but I'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> Thank you. It doesn't seem like uh, it would be. So we'll figure it out. Yeah. So after we we do the Helm OCI release, it should be uh, good to have a list of um, cloud repos that actually work with it. Um, mm -hmm. We have end-to-end -end tests for Google uh, for uh, GitHub Container Registry. Uh, I heard that the new Google Artifactory has support for Helm OCI. I'm not sure, maybe they block list or not. So whoever has access there, Kingdom, please give it a test. Um, yeah, and Azure ACR, they advertise Helm OCI support for, I don't know, half a year now. So I'm guessing mm -hmm. that works, but someone has to test it because, yeah. Uh, OCI is a great standard, but looks like every single implementation is so different and you hit all sorts of edge cases. So we we have no clue, basically. We only we can only tell people that it works with what we've tested, which right. is um, the Docker distribution, the latest version that works. We use it in our end-to-end -end tests and Google uh, a GitHub container registry because we use we use it also in our end-to-end -end tests. So. Uh, we should we should make the list uh, larger and tell people for sure what it works and what not. Okay, cool. There's a there's a table for the I was just trying to look for it, but I'm just going to stop looking right now because I have it somewhere. But um, there's a table for uh, for conformance. Yes, in the Oras project, I've seen that table, but. Yeah. We should actually test it with flux because if list tags doesn't work, nothing. Oh, oh update. Yeah. That is a work in progress and should be going out anytime now. Oh. Since oh. It's work in progress in six months, right? Yeah. I, I'll get you an ETA after the meeting. <laughs> <I see>. <laughs> <laughs> Last I knew it was June, according to uh, former boss here at AWS. So it's June. <laughs> yeah, maybe once we, when ECR public will have that, maybe we should talk about publishing the Flux images also to ECR public as a yeah. option for AWS users. So they don't have to pay all the traffic that goes mm -hmm. to, to GitHub. Yeah, this um, is, that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, especially, yeah. Uh, oh, apparently this issue blocks Dependabot as well. That's no good. <laughs> blocks everything. Like everything blocks has to all. be released, right? Good Lord. Yeah. All right. I'll let you know. Cool. Thank you. OK, I put that under an action item, too, just so that it's captured, but we can make sure that that's somewhere. Mm -hmm. publishing the flux images there in ACR public. Yeah, I'm guessing we have to apply to some AWS open source thingy, so we get a token. I can figure that out. Yeah, should be straightforward uh, how to push them once we have some authentication. Oh my God, awesome. I know, for example, the EKS Anywhere team builds their own flux images and they push them to, to ECR because yet again, cost and networking, right? Mm -hmm. But data gravity is a thing. Maintain a fork of our scripts. Um, mm. They have their the libgit2 dependencies and everything are very old there. It's always behind. Right, they they have many other things to do than just you know build every week a new flux image. Right. So it would be way better for us to have some kind of automation and build and publish on ECR at the same time we publish on GCR and Docker Hub. So right now we offer flux users two alternatives: Google Container Registry and Docker Hub as the backup. And but 
both of them are outside of any cloud. So if you reach there, you get yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, next step will be getting these official images built by us, signed by us with call sign, have as bomb generated, like what we do today, have the same thing integrated with um, ACR public, GCR and ACR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, every cloud should have your images, period. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. Flux yeah, I mean, should be everywhere, just like Helm, just like everything else, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, we sorted out the multi arch build. We, we mm -hmm. everything is sorted. We we sign our images, we generate S bomb for them, and so on. It's just about give me an uh, an account, and I'll push the same image there with the same signatures. So yep. it should be for us. It's easy. Just we we add a new Docker login and a new target. But yeah, yeah, you gotta add the target though, <laughs> and the target has to work. <laughs> right, right, right. That's, that's the most important. Thing. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll get you get you that info as soon as I have it. I'm actually that's not my next meeting. My meeting after that, I'll talk to the person that knows. So yeah, I'll know something by end of day. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. That's all listed under the action items. This is great. Sweet. Y'all are amazing. All right, well then, uh, it looks like um, we're probably good to go on that on that yeah. point. Um, so we'll all get nine minutes back. Um, <laughs> uh, this is great. See you all next time. Bye-bye.